Hey, good morning students. Sorry it's taken so long to do this. I thought I would do a bunch of individual reviews um, of the um, uh, your draft elevator pitches and then I thought it would make more sense to do a bunch of them um, uh, at once so you could see how I'm reviewing others, right? So let's, so I'm going to try to video the videos. So let's see how this goes. And then I'm going to give some feedback specifically. So like in this game, it's Joanna. So let's uh, let's see this. <clears throat> Have you or your loved one just like standing up for long hours uh, waiting in line, like in public transit during Black Friday? Okay, I could stop this one right away. Uh, this is just a voice file. So uh, you need to create a video. So in, in this particular case, um, uh, uh, you're going to get half the points, right? So I'm going to give you 12 and a half points. But at the end of the day, there needs to be a video component of this, not an image of you, Cam. There needs to either be a picture of you uh, or there needs to be a PowerPoint. So voice plus some sort of images that are not, you know, you, Cam. So let's go on to the next one. Adrian Cruz. That's what we got here, Adrian. <clears throat> Imagine going to the same sports bar in your neighborhood. The same sports bar that is impossible to find parking. Always having to worry about overpriced drinks and over and outdated TVs. At my sports bar, the orange and black sports bar, we would have our own private parking lot, the best drinks for the best value, the most updated TVs, and pool tables for people to play in. In terms of food, besides the same food that many sports, bar out, sports bars out there offer, we would offer delicious tacos as well. We would be open longer hours and offer longer happy hours which I feel would attract many more customers over the long run. And also, we would offer a Taco Tuesday where we would offer food <coughs> for a discounted price on that certain day. Besides the quality of service and being able to air all the major sports games, the tacos would be the main focus to keep the business running. Because, I mean, who doesn't like tacos? People would love to come to the business. Thank you for listening. Okay, this is a commercial. This is not an elevator pitch, right? That was a great introduction. Right? So here's the, if we, we got to go back and look at what the, what we're supposed to be doing here. What, what's required is that you have a company introduction that you talk about um, uh, uh, the company's research and that you uh, talk about the company's financials and that you have some sort of an ask at the end. So the examples that I've given you uh, clearly say that, right? That was a commercial. Uh, there should be no points for that, but I'm going to be a little generous on this, this, one, this go around. That's a commercial. I don't want a commercial. I need to hear about your company background. Tell me about the company. It shouldn't take more than 10 seconds. Tell me about the market research that you did to prove that this is a good idea. So tell me, look, I did a, a, a research report where we, we talked to uh, 50 clients, potential clients, and those clients told me X. And then tell me about the budget. And we ran the numbers, and it looks like this business can make money in, in, uh, in month four. Right? I need you to be very, very specific. This is a commercial. That's not an elevator pitch. On the final, there's no points for that.
PC order. Our dishes are made with the same authentic spices and ingredients that were used by our mothers and grandmothers. Our goal here at Soul Classic mm -hmm. is taste bud satisfaction. Once our meals have been reheated and served from our kitchen to yours, we can guarantee that the flavors in your favorite soul food dishes have not been compromised. Thank you for your time. Yeah, this is another commercial. This is a commercial, not an elevator pitch. I love hearing about the story. That's wonderful. <clears throat> but there's a reason why we did market research in this class. It's because part of, the, part of your elevator pitch needs to have research. Otherwise, you're just, you're just talking. The market research should tell you, should tell me that this is a viable business idea. That's great. You want to make some soul food based on your grandmother's recipes. Is there a market for that? Don't tell me there is. Give me the research to tell me that there is. My name is Erica Carson, and I'm here to talk to you about my company, Weirdly Wonderful Shop. Have you ever been really excited about a new accessory you got at the mall, only for it to fall apart on you by the time you got to dinner that night? Or maybe you get to dinner and your bestie has bought the exact same one. Well, we at Weirdly Wonderful Shop want to help. Our mission is to help rid you of those generic and cheaply made accessories and provide you with something that's unique and created to last. We constantly strive to keep up with the latest trends and highest quality materials available. Our company aims to educate and work closely with our customers to help them recognize their own unique style while incorporating the latest jewelry trends. Because of this, each piece of handmade jewelry is unlike any other. Next time you want to update your accessory collection, be unique. Weirdly Wonderful Shop, your go-to for jewelry that stands out. That's great. It's another commercial. All right, guys, I am seeing a trend here, and it's not a good one. You were given lots and lots of examples of what an elevator pitch looks like. They all have a company introduction. They have some market research, something to indicate that, that there is demand for this. There's got to have some sort of budget information, right? You got to be able to tell me, look, I think the company is going to generate a uh, million dollars in revenue and no profit in year one. I have got to hear something that tells me that there was market research performed. Um, I got to hear something about budget because as an investor, this is a great idea. I love it. That's wonderful, but can it make any money? So, so far I haven't seen anything that leads me to believe that any of these things should receive any funding. They're great commercials. Commercials are perfect after you've received funding. Socks is the answer for you. It is said that the average man spends one month of his life looking for socks. Bio socks comes in boxes that you can just pull two out of and uh, be on your way, which frees up that extra few minutes for things you actually enjoy. And at the end of the day, you can just throw them away. Worried about uh, adding to the already large amount of trash we produce? Well, worry no more. These are biodegradable. With a $30,000 investment, we can show profits within one year. Biosocks, where your time isn't lost. Thank you. Okay, so this one at least had some, you, you know, brief financial information in it, right? So he said, we need money. Okay, that's great. Uh, uh, but that's like the, the last part of the, of the puzzle. Like in this particular case, what I need to know is, did you talk to people about do you lose socks? Yeah, I do, right? Uh, uh, how often do you find yourself with one blue sock, one green sock, and you can't find the pairs? 
you did market research, tell me about it. So give me that short intro and then literally tell me, and then I did a survey of 900 people and uh, 40 people came back and said, yeah, man, I lose socks all the time. And then I asked them, would you have an interest in a service that provided you with disposable socks so you never had to worry about washing and losing socks again? And 82% of the people said yes. So assuming I sell these biodegradable socks for a buck a piece, I think I can sell a million pairs of socks by the end of the year, right? Whatever that is, I need to have some data that connects this idea to something that tells me that it could potentially be viable. And so this guy gets a few more points because he actually had the ask in it. I'm going really fast because if the file gets too big, um, I won't be able to upload it. And the other thing is that I know you guys aren't going to watch it. Uh, uh, some of you will watch all of it, but some of you are just going to be trying to figure out whether I reviewed you or not. So I'm going to try to go quickly so I can cover them all. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is LaShonda Smith. I would like to introduce to you Little Angels Group Home. There are so many at-risk teenagers who need a love and caring setting, and I will provide and attend to the needs of children no matter what they have been through. We will service children who have been removed from their homes due to neglect and abuse. We will provide a family setting with plenty of love and care. I have decided to go nonprofit with this business. The amount of money that I need to start this business will be $20,000 to get the business up off the ground and up and running until the state benefits kicks in. I plan to open up homes throughout the Bay Area servicing children who have been removed from their homes. Please support me. I'm looking forward to the community. To Love it, right? Great, wonderful. I need some data to tell me that um, why you need 20 grand. What are you going to do with the money? This is a commercial, not an elevator pitch, right? So you can't assume that somebody is going to understand what that there is a need for this business. The vast majority of the public, they have no idea that services like these are required. If you didn't do a survey, then point to statistics that are readily available in the marketplace. So you could easily point out, look, there's 65,000 kids in California that are in foster care. Well, you know, when they turn 18, they get no more services. They end up on the street. 50% uh, of them are homeless. What, give me some data to tell me that there's a problem. I don't care if it's a profit or nonprofit. I need research that tells me that there is demand for this. Don't tell me you know there's demand because I don't know who you are. You got to give me data that tells me that there's demand. And then tell me why you need that 20 grand. You know what? I'd like to start a business. I need a million dollars. Okay, what am I going to do with the money? Right? I need $20,000 so that I can open the first shelter, hire the first people, uh, buy jackets because it's cold and rainy outside, right? Tell me what you're going to do with the money. I mean, the use of proceeds is the most critical piece of the equation. I love that you're asking, but you got to tell me what you're going to do with the money. And normally your budget will tell me why you need that money, right? So these things, you got to connect the dots between all the things that we've just done now let's take a look. We got a few more here we got to get through and then hopefully I'll be able to get this thing uploaded into you guys quickly. Imagine a loved one unable to fulfill the simple daily tasks many of us are able to do with little effort. Imagine the struggle of putting on a shoe, tying those shoelaces, putting on a shirt, or even just going to the bathroom. Now imagine that this loved one came from a culture where their independence was their pride. Now, imagine that they couldn't speak any English. Just imagine how hard that would be for them. This is a common scenario in our world today where not enough emphasis is being placed on the aging, diverse population. House of Home is a specialized in-home senior care service. Our tailored services are aimed at specifically complementing the customs they're used to by matching caregivers who come from similar cultures and speak their common language. I'm asking for $20,000 for startup and insurance costs. You will see a return on your investment within 12 months. House of Home is looking to employ six individuals within the first six months and grow exponentially within the first year. I hope this message reaches you with the same sincerity in which it was delivered. Thank you. 
All right, so this guy got closer, right? I mean, that was good, all right? Uh, Mario, that was good. First of all, I love the idea, okay? But I need some data, brother. I need, like, how many, what market are you going to serve, okay? Uh, I need you to tell me how many people are in there. So as soon as you tell me, you're going to um, uh, start serving diverse cultures. So you're going to be serving, because, like, I'm Latino, I'm Puerto Rican, so... Puerto Rican culture is different than Mexican culture. You just can't give me somebody that speaks Spanish and be able to assume that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to let you take care of my abuelo, right? That's not going to happen. Or somebody from Korea, somebody from, these are all different cultures. Brother, you may have 12 different people that you've got to employ just to be able to cover the Bay Area. So I need you to tell me what you're going to be focusing on first, right? We're initially going to be focusing on, you know, the, 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 the predominant, uh, 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 cultures in the Bay Area. So we know that the Chinese do a really good job, take the Asians in general, as a, a broadly speaking, do a really good job taking care of their, uh, their elders, right? Uh, that, that's absolutely cultural. It goes back to, uh, to their home countries where you know, the, 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 the kids and the parents, they just live together, right? They're, they're, there's just no line. So who are you going to serve? So let's assume it's not the Asians. Maybe it's going to be Latinos. So you're going to be covering, maybe it's just Latinos. I need to know who you're going to cover. So you cover, you hit about half of this. I need some specific data that helps me connect the dots between idea and uh, that money that you think you're going to need in order to be able to hire a bunch of people and go do all this stuff. I also need a little bit of money on, I need a little bit of data on money. Like you're going to be charging, uh, what, what, 15 bucks an hour for non-medical care? Or are you guys going to actually be offering medical care? So there's a, there's a fine line. Well, actually, there's not a fine line. There's a hard line between somebody that's a, a medical caregiver and a non-medical caregiver. And the rate you can charge triples if there's medical involved. But then there's a bunch of licensing and stuff. Love the idea. I love anything to do with serving the aging population. I think it's one of the biggest untapped markets that there that exists. Uh, so I like that. I love the idea. But brother, I need to hear some data about who the customer is and how many of them there are. And um, so have me imagine a lot less and give me some data. Hi there. We're College Solutions, a college-based company committed to finding unique and innovative ways to solve the tedious problems that college students face. Our most recent product is a mobile application dubbed Crowd Control. Now imagine you're a college student relaxing at your apartment or house and you feel like getting something to eat. You cruise over to your favorite burrito place and find it packed with people. It could take 30 minutes, an hour, even more just to place your order, which is time you could be spending hanging with friends, doing homework working, or just not standing in line. With our app, you can search for your local gym, favorite food place, or coffee shop to study at and find out from other users using the app how crowded the place is. Think of it like Waze, the user-updated traffic app, which is updated by users letting people know of traffic jams, cops, etc. Besides for rating the business from deserted to packed, users can also post photos and videos and even write statuses about who might be there any food recommendations, and more. This will revolutionize how people look for places to eat. Because it's user-based, it will allow for students to help out each other and save time, while also creating a more enjoyable experience for all. It will also increase accuracy of busy ratings because fellow users are actually doing it themselves. I will use my fraternity connections, as well as others I know on campus, to spread this app to as many college kids kids as possible at UCSB as well as Santa Barbara City College. I'm asking for a $75,000 contribution for 5% in our company to cover development costs as well as cover any marketing and expansion costs to move to other schools. Investors can expect a two times return on their investment within two years. Thank you. So the, and this is, you know, it's good. You got, you know, you got two out of four, right? Yeah, I, I, it's the same thing, right? Where is the um, where is where is the the market research, right? Where is the data that tells me, you know, that that the people in UC Santa Barbara want this? Oh, I, 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 how many how many people? How much are you going to charge? What are your development costs, right? 
So I build technology stuff all the time. I just funded a, a pretty significant uh, technology development and uh, the budget six figures, right? So, um, you know, th th this is, tell me why you think you could build something like this and then launch it and do everything for 75 grand. So I, I need more data, but specifically I need to know that students want this. You can't just assume because it's really cool that they're gonna want it. You guys, students, are the most fickle people on the planet. You like something for 12 and a half seconds, and then you don't like it anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, there's a reason why there's a million and a half apps, and, and that has everything to do with the fact that, you know, you like something for one second, and then you're done and you move on. Give me some data to prove that people actually want this. Hi. My name is Tiana Williams, and I am a plus-size clothing designer with plus-size dreams. Are you yourself a plus-size woman? Or do you know a plus-size woman who has trouble finding fashion-forward clothing? The most common complaints about the plus-size industry is that the clothing lacks shape and style. What I want to provide is fun, fashion forward clothing that fits well. The line will be designed by me and sold online via Etsy. I want to show plus size women that we have options when it comes to fashion forward clothing. We all deserve to be beautiful and have clothing that fits extremely well. Thank you. Okay, once again, that's a commercial, right? This is... There's some good stuff in here, like, but but you're you're making assumptions, right? Like when you said, you know, the most clothing is this, that, or the other. Yeah, but you're just making that assumption. Now, had you said I did a survey, and the number one complaint that I heard from customers was that the clothing is lacks shape, uh, and that they're not stylish or whatever, um, then then okay, then I could have done that, right? Um, I need to know how much you're going to charge for your stuff. Um, I need some budget. I need to know how much money do you think you need in order to get this off the ground. So it's great that you're going to design it yourself. Uh, that's good. Uh, you know, and you've got a place that you're going to be able to sell it, but how much are you going to sell them for? And you're going to tell you, there's, there's a lot of data that talks about the plus size marketplace. And you didn't bring any of it into this. Uh, there's a ton that you can... Uh, that you can point to that's already data that's in the marketplace that talks about uh, the plus size community. I mean, obviously that is a, a burgeoning uh, marketplace. And so if you think you can uh, get in there and tap that, then I think you've got a good opportunity, but you got to tell me about it, right? You know, women, you know, used to be a size four, now they're a size 14. And, you know, as we get older, we get bigger. Give me some data, right? Fry it and boil it and simmer greens right and steam up some rice till it's fluffy and light. We roll all of the flavors in bamboo so tight. Pop one in your mouth and it's such a delight. So Lushi is a quick, delicious way to grab lunch or dinner on the go. We plan on offering Solushi rolls as well as other fine soul food options. Solushi is offered in fried chicken or Cajun shrimp flavors. I plan on purchasing a fully equipped food truck to sell Solushi as well as other soul food offerings. I have an initial $20,000 investment for my Solushi company. I need $40,000 to purchase the truck and license and insurance. Uh, from an investor. I believe that a soul food truck would do very well, especially in the Bay Area. We have events like First Fridays that are held downtown Oakland, which offer fine food offerings from food trucks. There are no cur currently no soul food offerings at all from food trucks. If you are interested in the Solushi business, please contact Tiffany Petrie at T by email at T J P T I F F A N Y at yahoo.com. Again, please contact Tiffany Petrie by email at T J P T I F F A N Y at yahoo.com. What is Solushi? So instead of me looking at a blank wall, which is pretty rude, by the way. 
this is exactly what I want, how I want to spend two minutes uh, listening to you uh, uh, speak, look, talk to a wall. That's unacceptable. Uh, I need to see you or I need to see uh, slides or more importantly, give me some pictures of what Solushi is. Don't give me a blank wall. That is just rude. All right, this is too much like a commercial. I appreciate you got 20 grand, you need 40 more. Tell me that there is demand, right? Don't tell me that one day a week something happens in Oakland. That doesn't tell me that there's any market research that's been done. Tell me about the population size that is going to have an interest in uh, this food that you're going to be delivering. <clears throat> the food truck biz is getting pretty played out. So I need to know what you're going to be doing that is so unique and different, right? And, and by the way, I just saw like two soul food uh, trucks this weekend. So there's plenty of soul food that's available on the truck. Maybe not in the way that you're doing it, which is why I need uh, to hear what you're doing that is different. And darn it, give me a picture of some food. Don't give me a picture of a wall. That, that's just disappointing. All right, let's see how many we got left here. All right, come on. Oh, come on. Blackboard freaks out every once in a while. Let me start over. And let's see who has yet. All right, looks like I got them all. <coughs> so this is the feedback, guys. Give me data, right? Give me data on market research. Give me data on budget. If you don't give me data on market research, you don't give me data on budget, you'll be lucky to get half the points, right? Uh, so I'm sorry if I was direct or maybe too uh, abrupt or, or maybe I could have been nicer and kinder, more gentler. But at the end of the day, this is the most critical piece of what we're doing. Everything I said in the beginning, everything that we learn leads up to this point. And so far, all you guys are giving me is commercials. I need some of that data that we collected in the middle, the meat of this class. Give me some market research and give me some budget, right? Tell me I'm going to be selling my plates of food for uh, $12.95 and I think I can sell on average 200 plates a day. Give me big stuff, right? That way I can picture in my head, all right, this place can do about $1,500 a day and they think that they could be active four days a week, that's $6,000 a month. Right, I, I want to be able to, to connect this vision you have, you all have, to some sort of data that tells me it's not just your idea, but that there's a market for it, and some numbers that help me connect the dots to there potentially being some sort of a profit. If you got questions, call me. Do not wait until next week and tell me your computer broke, because the answer is going to be bummer, right? So you guys got an extra week to get this wrapped up. That's more than enough time. Go back, look at your research, take a look at your budget. This shouldn't take you more than an hour. So call me with questions. Bye, guys.